5.3, solving trigonometric equations. Finally, we're there. Cool. All right, uh, equations. You know how to solve equations, hopefully, if you've made it so far to my class. Uh, nothing changes. The same way that you solve any equations in algebra, it's the same way that we're going to treat trigonometry. So before we actually throw some trig in there, kind of want to refresh your memory on solving equations. Uh, what are we doing when we're solving an equation? We are going to isolate. But in our case, back in algebra 2, you would isolate typically x, right? Or isolate whatever variable you were dealing with. In our case, you're going to isolate the trig function. We're going to isolate the trig function. Once you isolate the trig function, you will use, oop, that's a U, you will use the concept, and I'm going to highlight that, the concept of inverses. Uh oh. Yes. Yes. So when I say the word concept, I mean that we're not going to be using inverses with the restrictions. However, you know the restrictions for inverses, don't we? Right? But since we're only using the concept, remember that we can use the concept of it to find any angle with any rotations, so on and so forth, right? On the positive direction, on the negative direction. Agreed? All right, so we're going to be using the only the concept of inverses. So in other words, it's kind of good news because you don't really have to remember the restrictions of it. Okay? All right, so here's what we're going to do, and we're going to start with something very, very basic, very, very simple. You've seen this problem before, and you have actually know how to answer it. You just didn't know that you were solving an equation. You ready? Here's an example number one. Sine of x equals one-half. And then at that point, you're like, well... This is a function because you have an, an equation, I'm sorry, and you have an equal sign, right? So you're solving for x. However, you know that you can't really get x by itself, so you need to get the function of sine by itself, which it is already, right? It's sine x equals to one half. So this is kind of like an inverse problem. You need to ask yourself, where on the unit circle is sine one half? pi over six. And where else? Uh, two pi over no. <laughs> five pi over six, yeah. Five pi over six. But that only tells you notice how I didn't give you any restrictions. And well, if you recall, very quickly, you don't have to sketch this, but very quickly, sine looks something like and that's not even drawn a scale, so on and so forth. So that means that when it's one half, it's like here, 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 and it keeps going and going and going on that direction. But it also keeps going on this direction. So one half is there, and it keeps going on that direction. Agreed? So we have a whole bunch of angles that have a sine of one half. Agreed? Well, how can I tell all of them? Oh, an interval. Well, let me connect this back to the unit circle real quick. We know that pi over 6 is located right here. Agreed? That's pi over 6. So from here to here, it's pi over 6, and that has a sine of 1 half. Agreed? But what happens if I go from here to there? It's another 2 pi, right? You guys agree? Yeah. And if I do another, that's another 2 pi, right? And so forth. So would you say that every 2 pi, I have a coterminal angle? that has the same sign as pi over 6. So what if we say plus 2 pi? That would be another rotation, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I want to say two rotations? Three rotations? So what if I say 2 pi n, where n is an integer? Would that give you every single possible angle? Yeah. Yes, it would. So then what's the answer for 5 pi over 6? Plus 2 pi n. 
and your responses are therefore x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and x equals to 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Cool? Questions? Do we understand what the 2 pi n represents? Okay. Tosh, what's up? That's fine. You could just say x equals this, comma, that. That's absolutely okay. Cool? Questions? Now, notice that the instructions didn't give you any restrictions. That's the reason why I gave that answer. If it gives you restrictions, they use the restrictions. For example, are we good with this one? Yeah. So, if I give you the following problem. Evaluate from 0 to 2 pi but look at the way that I wrote this. Hmm. What does that mean? It means the unit circle. Agreed? I'm only looking for answers on the unit circle. But what does this mean? Zero is not a possible answer. However, you can include two pi. Two pi could be an answer. Well, let's talk about it. What do we know about the relationship between the angle zero radians and two pi radians? Not at the same angle they are, co-terminal angle. So in a way, if, you wanna, if you're trying to say that it's zero, but you can't include zero, you're going to have to say 2 pi. Understood? So here's the problem. 2 cosine x equals negative 1. All right. Well, this works just like equations. You're trying to isolate the trig function. At this moment, you have a 2. How do I get rid of it? So cosine x equals to negative one half. Agreed? All right. So then now it just becomes: Can you use inverses? Can you use your unit circle? Where on the unit circle, because we're going from zero to two pi, do you have a cosine of negative one half? What's the cosine of 2 pi over 3? What's the cosine of 4 pi over 3? You should never miss these questions because you can check your work every single time. So if you, obviously you have to know your unit circle for this, right? So there's, I'm going to be honest, there's no way around it for this one. You need to know your unit circle. So if you know your unit circle, you can always check your work. The problem is going to be if you don't know your unit circle, then you're going to have some issues with these problems, okay? What would the answer be if it didn't have the restrictions? It's another, a whole nother revolution. Well, agree, right? So n ha has to be an integer for this to work. Are we cool? Yes. So in other words, I'm showing you this because on the CBA you got to make sure you read the instructions. Okay. If it was just that, then I would have said that this is my answer. But if it had nothing at all, then your answer would be here at the bottom. Agreed? How are we feeling about this? Better. Yes? Because to be honest, from here is just practicing. So I'm, I think I'm just going to throw some problems at you here in just a second. I'm going to show you one with tangents so you kind of have an idea how they look like. And then I'm just going to throw some problems your way and I'm going to let you solve them. Try to solve them on your own. Okay? All right. Here we go. Example number three. Uh, we're going to just use for this purposes. Now we're going to use evaluate from 0 to 2 pi one more time. Okay, so this time I am giving you the restrictions. I feel like it's very clear now what what I'm what is expected of you. Uh let's check this out. So you have tangent squared x equals 1. All right. Um it's isolated, which is good, right? I don't have anything with the tangent. However, I don't know any tangent squares personally, so I don't know if you know any tangent squares. Uh, what do you suggest? Yes. Bingo. Think about, like, for example, this being x squared equals 1. If you wanted to get rid of the square, you would square root it. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. 
So what's the square root of tangent squared x? Tangent x. And what's the square root of 1? Good. Plus or minus 1. So you have to be very careful. So in other words, you're solving kind of two problems here. You need to find out where tangent is 1, but you also need to know where tangent is negative 1. Agreed? All right, so where is tangent positive 1? Pi over 4 and? 5 pi over 4 because it's in quadrant 3, right? And where is the negative? 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. You don't have to list them separately. You could have just said x equals pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. More than likely on your CBA, they're going to list them in order from gr least to greatest. But to be completely honest, it's multiple choice. Okay? Questions so far? Are we good? Are you ready to try some of this on your own before we take it to like more difficult problems? Okay? I'm going to give you two problems to try on your own. I'll give you about five minutes and then we'll go over it together. Okay? So here's the problems that I need you to try. Okay. The first one is sine x minus the square root of 3 equals to negative sine of x. And the other one I need you to solve is 3 tangent square x minus 1 equals to 0. So if you're watching the video, please pause it, work on this, and come back and check your answer. Alright, welcome back. Uh, this first one, what did you guys do first? You need to isolate sine, right? So right now you have signs on both sides. So you can either take this one to the right side or take the right one to the left. Honestly, I'm not big on having negative, so are you okay with me adding it? I am. What if we say no? <laughs> then it's fine. I can work on the other direction. Now, I'm going to save myself a step and add square root of 3 at the same time. So that means that I have sine plus sine is... 2 sine x. Is equal to... Square root of 3. Shh, guys. Now, I'm sorry, if you're watching the video, I forgot to mention that we are going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Uh, which means that in this case, you have sine x equals to the square root of 3 over 2. So, where on the unit circle do you have a sine of square root of 3 over 2? Pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Cool? All right, next one. This one, you need to subtract, add 1, I'm sorry, and then divide by 3. So it becomes tangent squared of x equals to the 1 third. You're going to take the square root of both sides. Yes, sir? Um, on the top one, would it be positive? Why is it not positive? Because you already had the square root of yeah, it. You're not square root of it. The only time you include positive or negative is like what I'm about to do when you actually take the square root of something. Okay? So here, since you are taking the step of taking the actual square root, then you get the tangent x equals to plus or minus the square root of one-third. Now, hopefully you remember your rules for square roots from Algebra 2. That's the same thing as saying plus or minus the square root of 1 over the square root of 3. Right? Which we all know that the square root of 1 is 1, and then you have 1 over square root of 3. So you're going to have to do analyze this by multiplying by the root 3 both denominator and numerator. Agreed? So then this becomes tangent of x equals plus or minus root 3 over 3. So where on the unit circle on quadrant 1, let's just start there, do you have a tangent of square root of 3 over 3? Pi over 6. Pi over 6. And that's all you need really because since you're including the plus or minuses, it's in every quadrant. Agree? So 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Questions?
Are we okay before we move on to different types of equations? Ready to step it up a little bit. Okay, you ready? Let's move on then. Next problem. Uh, okay, this time you have a secant. So, if you know your secants, you can go ahead and answer the question, but I'm going to assume that most of you probably don't have secants memorized. Agreed? Okay. I mean, maybe I have a few of you that you actually want to memorize secants, cosecants, and cotangents, which is awesome. You can answer the question right away. However, well, remember how we spent 5.1 and 5.2, and I introduced you to a whole bunch of identities that we can use, yeah. and the whole concept of substitution and whatnot? Yeah. Well, we know that secant can be converted into cosine in a way. That's 1 over cosine equals to negative 2. So, now, what you can do here is you have an equation, you have a fraction equals to this negative 2. There's two things you can do here. Uh, you can do cross multiplication because this would be negative 2 over 1. And if you get cross multiplication, then you have negative 2 cosine x equals to 1, right? Therefore, cosine x equals to negative 1 half. Agreed? So now, you've taken a problem that was in terms of secant, which is a ratio that you're probably not too familiar with as far as memorization-wise, and we turn it into something that you have. So where on the unit circle is cosine negative 1 half? 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So now you know that the secant at 2 pi over 3 is negative 2, and the secant at 4 pi over 3 is negative 2. Cool? Now I'm going to be honest. If you could have recognized right at the beginning that secant and cosine are reciprocals, you could have just said cosine x equals the reciprocal of this, which would be negative 1 half. Right? You see what I'm saying? All right, moving on. Cotangent of x times cosine squared x equals to 4 cotangent of x. Uh, we have a problem. We've been dealing with problems so far that had to do with only one type of trig function, but now you have cotangents and cosines. Yes, sir? Can we just divide both sides by cotangents? Okay. So, typically yeah. that is the response that I get most of the times. Uh, and we're going to go, you said to divide by cotangent since both sides have cotangent, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we divide by cotangent, then what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, right? That's going to go away. That's going to go away, leaving you with cosine squared x equals to 4. Agreed? Yeah. Then what would you do from there? Cosine of x equals to plus or minus 2. Can you ever get a sine or a cosine that's greater than 1? No. Why not? Well, I know that the unit's circle, but think, go back to the triangles. This all originated from right triangles, agreed? What's the ratio of cosine? What over what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And what do we know about properties of right triangles? The hypotenuse always has to be what? The largest side of a triangle. Otherwise, we don't have a right triangle. So if you have something over a number that's bigger than whatever the numerator is, can you ever be over above 1? No. no. Therefore, this is, we call it that, that's an empty set or no solution. Okay? Now, unfortunately for you, we've made a wrong decision by divided by cotangent. Here's why. We have a power of 2 which makes this a problem a quadratic. Go back to Algebra 2. To solve quadratics, what must happen? 
to solve quadratics, you must be equal to zero. You must be equal to zero. Otherwise, you're going to miss solutions, which is what happened here. Okay? So, add this to your notes. To solve quadratics, you must be equal to zero. Don't forget that. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to take the exact same problem, but we're not going to divide by cotangent, and let's see what happens. We need to set it equal to zero. So, if I'm going to do that, what must I do? Well, so, then this is going to be cotangent x cosine squared x equals to 4 cotangent x, right? That was a problem. So I need to set it equal to 0. So how am I going to do that? Agreed? Now I'm equal to 0. Now I can solve the problem. Any suggestions? What could we do here? Factor out a cotangent. Wait, this is starting to look like that homework that I gave you, what, like two weeks ago, right? Remember those 50 problems of factoring or whatever? Okay. Um, yeah. All right, now, remember that once you factor an expression, what do you do with each factor? Set each factor equal to zero. So then you have cotangent x equals zero, and then we have cosine squared x minus four equals zero. This looks familiar. This is the same thing that we had earlier when we divide it by cotangent, right? So we already know the solution to that, but you can try it. We already know that this is going to be no solution. Agreed? However, when we divide it by cotangent, we forgot about this guy over here, right? So then here's my question to you, uh, because most of us know sines, cosines, and tangents, not really the cotangents. However, you can use tangents to help you out. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. Remember that, right? So where tangent is zero, cotangent is going to be undefined. And where tangent is undefined, cotangent is going to be zero. So since we're looking for where cotangent is zero, you really need to ask yourself, well, where is tangent undefined? Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Very good. And you can always check your work because at pi over 2, you have the coordinate 0, 1. Cotangent is cosine over sine. 0 over 1 is 0. Cool? Moving on. I feel like I'm, you guys are understanding this, so we're going to move on. Yes? Oh, you could have. Yeah. Still getting you the same answer. Try it. Because taking the square root of something is the same thing as doing the difference of squares. Alright, um, next one. Alright, this problem. I just want to make sure you can get started and then you're going to try this on your own. 2 sine squared of x minus 3 sine x equals to negative 1. What would you do first? Bring over the 1. It's a quadratic. Quadratics must be equal to 0. From here, what would you do? Factor this out and solve. Go for it. Try it. For those of you that are struggling to factoring this out, okay, guys, pay attention. If you're struggling with the factoring because there are signs in here, you can you can rewrite this algebraically. But you have to remember that you're not dealing with here's what I mean. I'm gonna rewrite this as two x squared minus three x plus one. But you have to kind of keep in your mind that you're not with sign. Understood? If this helps you factor it out, then turn it into that. If you don't need to, then don't. Here's what I mean, because from here, a lot of you guys use the box method or whatever other method you use, the AC method, 
I think it becomes easier, but ultimately, if you factor this out, this becomes 2x times x. The only thing that gets you 1 is 1 times 1. It needs to be positive, but add up to a negative, so it becomes, right? Now, from here, what I would do is now I need to go back to signs, because that's what I had. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 sine x minus 1, and then sine x minus 1 equals to 0, right? Now that I have two factors, and I know that 2 sine x minus 1 equals to 0, and sine x minus 1 equals to 0, therefore, sine x equals to positive 1 half, and sine x equals to 1. So now you're ready. On the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi, where is sine 1 half? Pi over 6, pi over six and 5 pi over 6. And where is it 1? pi over 2. Agreed? Questions? We're good? Alright, well let's make this a little harder now. Uh-oh. All right, guys, I need you to pay attention to this one because this was the whole purpose of 5-1 and 5-2 for problems like this. All right, so I have 2 sine squared x plus 3 cosine minus 3. Okay, it's a quadratic, and this looks almost like the previous problem, so you might want to think of factoring. However, there's no way that you can factor out this expression with sines and cosines. You need to use those identities that we learned. For example, stay with me. This right here, this you know what that is in terms of cosine, hopefully. What is that? What is sine squared x in terms of cosine? Cosine squared x minus 1. 1 minus cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals to 0. Did I lose anyone how sine squared x become, became 1 minus cosine squared x? We're good? Now, before you start solving this, I suggest that you kind of clean this up a little. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals to 0. Agreed? Now, clean it up a little more. Uh, negative 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x, 2 minus 3 is minus 1 equals to 0. Now, from here, you could try to factor this out, uh, and you should be able to do it successfully. However, that negative of from makes factoring a little bit more difficult, so we could get rid of it by doing what? Either multiplying or dividing the entire thing by negative 1. So that becomes 2 cosine squared x minus 3 cosine x, 0. Because 0 divided by negative 1 is 0, or 0 times negative 1 is 0. Agreed? Now, this has become a problem just like the one before. This thing should factor out. The only thing that's going to give you 2 is 2 times 1, right? The only thing that's going to give you cosine squared is cosine x times cosine x. The only numbers that are going to give you 1 is 1 times 1. It needs to multiply to be a positive, but add up to be a negative, so they both have to be negative, right? Therefore, now you know that you have cosine x equals to 1 half, right? And cosine x equals to 1. So where on the unit circle is cosine one half? Pi over three. And five pi over three. And where is cosine one? Oh, good. It's not zero. Why not zero? Zero was non-inclusive. 
Agreed? Yes. Uh, you have to read each problem. Each problem is going to tell you on this test what. Re yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, when you're taking the test, don't forget to read the instructions. Like, don't assume that they're all going to be from zero to two pi. So just read the instructions and make sure that you apply for each pro each problem accordingly. Okay. All right. How are we feeling? Good. We okay? A little nervous? All right. I'm going to show you one more like this and then we got to move on to the most difficult that we're going to do. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you one to try similar like this, so that means you're going to have to use substitution of identities. Okay? All right, I need you to try this one on your own or with a partner, okay? 3 secant squared x minus 2 tangent squared x equals to 4. Go for it. Okay, so the first step I would have encouraged you to take is that this is a quadratic, so 3 secant squared x minus 2 tangent squared x minus 4 equals to 0, right? Okay. Would anyone like to share what they did after this? What should you do, Zach? Uh, I use the identity that secant squared x equals tangent squared x plus 1. Okay, so we know that secant squared x is the same thing as tangent squared x plus 1. Agreed? And then you have minus ta 2 tangent squared x. Agreed? Are we all okay with that? Now, here's what we know. We have a 3, 3 times tangent squared, that's 3 tangent squared x. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 tangent squared x minus 4 equals to 0. Now, I have 3 tangent squared minus 2 tangent squared is tangent squared x. 3 minus 4 is equals zero. Therefore, tangent squared of x equals to one, right? And tangent x equals to what? Plus or minus one. And did we not already do this problem? X equals pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over Did anyone, just pause for a moment, did anyone turn this tangent square right here into 1 minus secant squared x? You could have gone that direction, it would have made it a little more difficult, but it would still eventually gotten you to the answer. Cool? Questions on this problem before we go to our final, well not our final problem, but our final, our final type of problems? Final yes sir. So Shh, guys. Yes, sir. Uh huh. So we already found what tangent was, but do we have to find what secant is? No, because we made the substitution. We just rewrote it. But it will give you the same answer. So, for example, let me show you how this would look graphically. So, like, if you were to put pi over 4 there, well, does anyone know the secant of pi over 4? Well, you know the cosine of pi over, f I mean, the yeah, the cosine of pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2, so it's the reciprocal of that, which makes it 2 root 2 over 2, which is root 2. What's root 2 squared? 2 times 3 is 6. So let's keep that in mind, all right? So we have a 6 here. Minus. Stay with me. What's the tangent of pi over 4? One. Times 2? Two? 6 minus 2? Four. 4. No, but I hope you guys understand that that's what's happening. Like, when you solve for x, don't you go back and plug in x and it should give you the same thing? Uh, to be completely honest, I could ask you that. I could ask you to go back and check your work, but there's no way that I can make sure that you checked your work. But you have to understand that if you... In order for this to be correct, 
you need to be able to plug it back in and get the same answer that you have here. Otherwise, you didn't do it correctly. Now, I understand this was a way more complicated than the problem where we started because I even did that for the very first problem that we started. We had sine x equals one half. If you plug in pi over six, that was one of the answers. It gives you one half. So it's the same thing. It's just a more complicated problem. Okay. All right. Questions before we move on to the last type of problems. All right, which leads us to our last type of problems. And let me... <laughs> Double angles slash multiple angles. All right, here's what I mean by that. Are you ready? No. I don't even know why I ask if you're ready. I'm still going to move on. Okay, if you look at that problem, it honestly doesn't look too different from what we've been doing. Does anyone notice what's different, though? That's different. Everything we've done has been like sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, etc. Now you have a coefficient in front of it. Yes, sir? Is a negative one a part of the parentheses? No. Anytime, well, there is no parentheses. So anytime it's going to be included, there will be parentheses. Cool? So if there's no parentheses, this means that this is outside. So if we're thinking about graphing, this means down one. Right? Because we love graphing, right? Absolutely All right. Not. Anyways. This works the exact same way as, ev as everything we've done. We got to isolate the trig function. So how am I going to do that here? With add, add 1 and then... So you would say that cosine 3x equals 2, 1 half. Here's the catch to this problem. Regardless of whatever restrictions I give you, you must always solve the problem by giving me the answer that would give you any angle no matter how many rotations there are. Here's why, okay? Here's what we're going to do first. We're going to use the concept of substitution. We talked about substitution a few classes back. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let, I'm going to pick a random variable. I typically pick u. You can pick anything else. Let u equals 3x, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to rewrite this as cosine u equals one half. Are you guys with me? Right? Because now you add, this looks something like you know how to do. Where on the unit circle is cosine one half? Pi over three over three and five pi over three. You guys agree? Now. Remember how I told you that for this double angle or multiple angle problems, you have to give me this answer. And I'll explain to you why in just a second. Okay? You guys okay with that? You remember this. We talked about this earlier. Do we understand what the 2 pi n means? Okay. Now, the only thing is that you have to go back and say, like, well, wait a second. This problem was not in terms of u. It was in terms of x. But what, what is u? You guys with me? Is that okay? Are we okay? All right, but we don't want three x. We want x. All right, this you should have no problem with. Yes, ma'am. You okay? All right. What's pi over three divided by three? Pi over nine. Pi over nine. Very good. Remember that when you're taking a fraction divided by just a number, it's like you can just multiply those numbers out. I mean, not multiply them. Yes, multiply them. Sorry. <laughs> 2 divided by 3, you don't know. So, 2 thirds, right? Mm -hmm. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. This one then becomes x equals what? 5 pi over 9 plus pi n over 3. Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay. This is going to help you find any angle. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if I could also say subtract. 
same way, right? Same thing. However, what if pretend that the instructions at the beginning did say between 0 to 2 pi? Well, you can still use this to find all the answers. You ready? N is just an integer, agreed? So, since it's an integer and I'm looking for angles between 0 and 2 pi, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to plug in 0 for N. What's 2 pi times 0? So this entire thing is 0, right? Plus pi over 9 is? Pi over 9. You guys with me? Now what if you plug in 1? Well, if I'm going to plug in 1, I'm going to have to get common denominators in order to add the fractions. Do you guys agree? So are you guys okay with me saying that because the common denominator is going to be 9, then I have to multiply by 3, so that becomes 9, and this becomes 6? You guys with me? We have two fractions with uncommon denominators that need to be added, so we need to get common denominators. Now, pi over 9 plus 6 pi n over 9 is the same thing as pi over 9 as 2 pi n over 3. All we did was get common denominators. Still, if you plug in 0, that would be 0. That's just pi over 9, right? If you plug in 1, what's 6 pi times 1? So now you have 6 pi over 9 plus pi over 9. Is that in between 0 and 2 pi? Good, so that's also going to be an answer. Keep going. If you plug in 2, 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is? Is 13 pi over 9 between 0 and 2 pi? Oh, that's an answer as well. If you plug in 3, what's 6 times 3? 18 plus 1 is 19. 19 divided by 9 is about 2 point something, right? So that's more than 2 pi, so that's, that's it. No more angles than that. Well, no, because it's between 0 and 2 pi. Oh, okay. Right? Yes, sir. Then that's what brings me to that point. Even though there's the restrictions, and you're like, oh, that's easy, the restrictions, you would have gotten the answers just pi over 9 and 5 pi over 9. And you would have been missing this one, this one, plus the ones we're about to find out because we're not done with the problem. Yes. So if there's a fraction, you have to Yes. Okay. I feel like we're getting lost and we didn't really understand what 2 pi n meant. So, shh, guys, stay with me. What does 2 pi n represent? Okay. 2 pi represents what? A revolution. And what did n represent? The number of revolutions. Why would I care to have an angle plus 2 pi n. Why? Because that would allow you to find any angle, no matter what interval it is. You can find a positive angle, you can find a negative angle if you want to. However, remember, if you're adding 2 pi, it's like you're going on, it's like you're running on a track. If you're starting at one point and then you add 2 pi, you're going to come right back to the same place. But you've already advanced some angle, right? So no, it's no longer like you're at pi over 6 anymore. You're now at 13 pi over 6, for example. And then another 2 pi, and so on and so forth. Now, why would I want to switch the 2 pi n to switching 2 pi n? This is, if you think about it, 6, 6 pi n divided by 9. It's the same thing that we had earlier, which was 2 pi n divided by 3. But why did we divide by 3? Well, no because we had an angle that was a multiple of 3. I feel like we're getting lost in the algebra, not so much the concept. So this yeah. is, this ones are going to require like a lot of practice, I'm going to be honest, and this one is one of the most common in the CBA. So I'm going to practice another one, but let's finish this one because we still have this and we haven't finished here. So now you're going to plug in, always start at 0. I understand, but I got you. Yes, you can do that. If I plug in 1 here, well, again, I'm going to have to get common denominators, right? Yeah. So this is going to turn into what? 6 and a 9, right? 
So 1, 6 plus 5 is? 11. <laughs> if I plug in 2, 6 times 2 is? Plus 5 is? And hopefully you realize that after that you're going to go over 2 pi. Your answer is? Pi over 9. 7 pi over 9. 13 pi over 9. 5 pi over 9. 11 pi over 9. And 17 pi over 9. Yes, sir. Without restrictions? If I don't give you restrictions, your answers will be pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Over 3, I'm sorry, yes. Right? Because we still have to divide by 3, I'm sorry. You see what I'm saying? Yes. This is going to require some practice. So I have about five more problems for this, and we'll keep going until you understand it. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Ready? Fill it out. Okay, let's go with something easy, okay. since we're struggling a little bit. Sine 2x equals to square root of 3 over 2. What would you do first? Sine of u equals Let u be 2x. Sine u equals square root of 3 over 2. Now what? Um, u equals Find out what u is. So where is sine square root of 3 over 2? Pi over plus 2 pi n, and where else? 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Agreed? Now what? Well, now we're going to go back and substitute 2x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. 2x equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Agreed? And then I'm going to do what you guys were telling me to do, which is divide by 2. x equals, what's pi over 3 divided by 2? Pi over 6. Plus, what's 2 pi over 2 pi n divided by 2? Great. Right? That means that on this side it's going to be 2 pi over 6 plus pi n. Right? Now, what I'm going to encourage you to do is that it makes your life easier if you can simplify things. Like, for example, if you can recognize that that's the same thing as pi over 3, you can go ahead and do that. If not, you can wait until the end. Now, here's the question. Now, how are you going to find out all the solutions? You need to get common denominators. X equals pi over 6 plus what? 6 pi n over 6. On this side, are you guys okay with me saying that that's pi over 3? If I want to get common denominators, then it would be 3 pi n over 3. Agreed? I'm still looking for answers between 0 and 2 pi, okay? X equals, start by plugging in 0. 0 times 6 pi is 0, plus pi over 6 is pi over 6. If you plug in 1, 6 pi times 1 is 6 pi, plus pi is, if you plug in 2, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, 13 pi over 6 is more than 2 pi, agreed? So we're not going to include that one, so that means that as far as this goes, that's the answer for that, for the, that one right there. Now we got to move on to this one x equals definitely pi over 3, right? What else? Anything else? So your answers are x equals pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. How can you make sure that you got the correct answer? All right, very quickly, what's 2 times pi over 6? What's the sine of pi over 3? Square 
square root of 3 over 2. Bingo. 7 pi over 6 times 2 is what? 14 pi over... What's the sign of 14 pi over 6? Root 3 over 2. If you plug in pi over 3, what's 2 times pi over 3? 2 pi over 3. What's the sign of 2 pi over 3? Square root of 3 over 2. You can always check your answers with this. Okay? Alright. You look like you don't like me. I'm okay with that. I can survive. Uh, I have like three more problems, but we're running out of time. So I'm going to just work on two. But because of time, I'm going to work with them like as we go. Okay? Uh, hopefully you're understanding because the only part that I feel like you're going to be lost with is just the algebra. Okay? Uh, just stay with me. Tangent of x over 2 minus 1 equals to 0. Uh-oh. Well, that's the same thing as saying tangent 1 half x minus 1 equals to 0. Agreed? Which then would say that tangent of 1 half x equals to 1. Agreed? Let u equals 1 half x. Therefore, tangent u equals 1. Right? Where on the unit circle is tangent 1? Pi over 4 and... Five pi over four. Notice how I'm always including the two and pi. Anytime you have multiple angles or double angle, whatever you want to call them, always include the two and pi. Okay? Now we're ready to go back and make our substitution, right? We did not have u, we have one half x equals pi over four plus two and pi and 1 half x equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 and pi. I need to isolate x. So what can we do? We can either divide by 1 half, but it's easier to multiply by 2, right? Do you guys agree? So x equals, what's pi over 4 times 2? So pi over 2. What's 2 times 2? So 4 and pi. Agreed? x equals, what's 5 pi over 4 times 2? 5 pi over 2, right? Or in other words, if you're actually multiplying, that's the same thing as 10 pi over 4, right? Which simplifies to 5 pi over 2, plus 4 and pi. Now, I want to bring your attention to what we just got here. Because if you pay attention to what you're doing, rather than just start doing math, you actually know that you're actually done with this problem because you don't really have to do much. I can already tell you that the only answer to this problem is pi over 2. Here's why. Pay attention. 4 and pi, isn't that 4 revolutions? So if I add, I mean not 4 revolutions, that's 2 full revolutions, right? If I add that, that's already going to be more than 2 pi, even just once, right? 5 pi over 2, is that above 2 pi? I don't even care about that. I already know that the only answer is pi over 2. However, let's say you did not see that because you got lost in the algebra and you were just so into this problem. You would have gotten all these other answers, but eventually you, would have, you should be able to recognize that all the other answers that you found for this were going to be above 2 pi, which would not be under restrictions from 0 to 2 pi. Therefore, you do not need to include them. Cool? Not cool. Last one, and I'm going to leave you alone. Yes, sir. Sure. Why not? You could. Why not? I mean, you. I mean, I'm going to be honest. It's something that you can handle. Obviously, like you just substitute the u and then take the square root, and then go back and take two x. But yeah, absolutely. It's not. Honestly, it doesn't bring it to 
uh, doesn't make it too difficult to do that. All right, this is the last problem I'm going to do. What do you, what would you do? Good. I'm going to go with what Mehdi says here, which is, you know what, why would I distribute when that would undo what I've been doing all day today, which is kind of factor things out and then set them equal to zero. I was very nice, and this is already factored out for you. So don't distribute. You're going to undo everything I did for you, in other words. So set each factor equal to zero. Now I'm going to start with the right-hand side because that's the easiest one because it's just a single angle. Agree? So this becomes cosine x equals negative one-half, right? Where is cosine negative one-half? Cool. Here, it's going to be just like the ones we've been doing. Let u equals 2x, so cosine u equals to 0, right? Therefore, u equals to, where is cosine 0 between 0 to 2 pi, where 0 is non-inclusive? Pi over 2 plus 2 and 2 pi n, right, or 2 n pi, same thing. And where else? 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over two plus 2 pi n. But we didn't have u, we had 2x. Right? So, I'm going to have to divide by 2, right? So we'll divide this entire mess by 2. x equals pi over 2 divided by 2 is pi over 4 plus pi n. Right? I'm going to go ahead and get common denominator since I have to do it anyway. So x equals pi over 4 plus 4 pi n over 4. Right? That's that one. So this one. If I divide by 2, I get x equals 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Therefore, 3 pi over 4 plus 4 pi n over 4. Right? You ready? Let's solve this. Plug in 0, I get pi over 4. Plug in 1, you get 5 pi over 4. Plug in 2. 9 pi over 4 is going to go above 2 pi, right? Yeah. So those right there. And here we get 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right, for homework. You will have the following homework. Looks like this. Four times purpose is because half of you have already checked out. You're only responsible from 1 through 15. Yay. 16 through 21 has to do with the calculator. So, unfortunately, if you're watching the video, we didn't have time for me to teach you how to do this on the calculator. So, you're going to have to either Google yourself how to do it or make sure you pay attention in class, which I will probably have already taught it in any other class. Okay? Uh, for you guys, I will show you how to do these problems in the calculator during review day. Okay? So for homework, and I'm telling you, it's for a grade 1 through 15.